Okay, hello, hello. Good evening. Hello, Harry Smallwood, hello. Captain Mike, how's it going? Lamb, hello. Prime, hello, Chatters. Re, hello. Amarade, Hype, how's it going? 23 months, thank you so much for the Prime. How are you? What's good, Lamp? How are you doing? All right, so it's been a minute. Um, just been kind of busy with work stuff, so I didn't get a chance to stream the past week. But um, today we got this um, this build. So today we're gonna be building this. Oh, Okay, there we go. We're gonna be building this Nissan Design 700E. Um, this design has been out for a bit. Um, this was run um, back in like, I forget when exactly. It was run like, la it's like almost two years ago. Um, and this was like a raffle, I think, to click like IO. Um, and then I later got this unit uh, from from Clay Clack slash Neeson and kind of sat for a bit because I had my move and then and then just didn't get a chance to build it and so I just kind of wanted to try it out um it's a uh, FRL TKL basically and what's kind of unique about it is that it uses this space bar that's kind of split off in a separate cluster uh which I thought was kind of neat um, and yeah, just, just gotta check that out and try it out. So, and then a while back, um, I had gotten a care package from our friends at Axiom Studios. They're the people who designed the Type 60 and the Type 65. And, um, I got these, um, these switches from them and I realized that I had stored these as well and not tried them out. And these are the... KTT Yetsia and these are actually like a nearly four millimeter I think travel kind of like other KTTs but um, these are a three pin mount so it should work well with the full plate that we have today so I uh, just lube them uh, lightly and uh, just gotta check them out all right need to fly to Cali at 5 a.m. Oh wow, for work? Are you flying out for work? Lamp. So Mr. Ninewalker, hello. Dr. Killswitch, hello, how's it going? How long are you going there for? And where in California actually? So let's open this guy up though. Um, so I haven't opened this, so let's see what's in here. I only know that there are two plates in there. Okay, so I guess just like an intro thingy. And I guess maybe is this is like an auth card. Certification card. Oh, okay, just yeah, it's like an auth card. Huh. It comes with a nice sleeve here. Nice hard sleeve. Uh, I guess I should put it this way. Um, nice to have a late night stream. Yeah, what's up, Mr. Ivan? How are you doing? How you doing, man? It's been a minute. Um, so let's see. Nissan Design found it in 2018. Oh, really? It's been a while. In Shanto, China, with the original intention of using lines to embody product design. We hope to bring people close to close in the keyboard community with our products. We're also passionate about design. Welcome Nissan Design and cooperate with us to create more interesting designs. Okay, so this is one of the main units from the raffle, apparently. One of 170 winners of the 100 of the 700E. Um, granted, I um, I did get this much later, so I did not participate in said raffle at the time. Uh, internal accessories package. Okay, so I'm assuming this got the full shebang. So let's see what we have here. 
So we have, yeah, as expected, I have a smoky polycarb plate, which is split into two. It's like a, one of those, um, one of those uh, split plates it has a main cluster plate and a like a TKL nav cluster plate. Pretty neat. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be. I'm not sure if it's like gasket mount. Kind of looks like gasket mount. And then we got a pretty flex cut heavy aluminum plate. FC Long, hello, how's it going? Start to film stuff and go home, also the 9 to 5? Ah, okay. And here's our PCB. Um, it says 1.2 millimeter flex PCB QMK VIA. Okay. We'll work with what we have. So, take this out of the bag. I haven't decided whether to use the PC plate or the alu plate. If you guys want to pick, you can. I don't really have a strong preference for either, but yeah. Okay, looks like I have, just have to cut out these pieces. And it looks like this ribbon cable is going to connect the two, um, two portions here. And then I assume that's for the, the USB connector. Uh, 7U fixed. These flexicles are pretty large, actually. Mm, I might actually end up taping these up. I'm not a huge fan of flex cuts like this. They're a little too much. Okay. Cool. Nice dark blue PCB. And I think this is just a uh, case foam. We might use it, depending on how I feel about that. And then we got... I think this is just P foam and plate foam as well. Personally, usually never use these guys, but it is an option too. Oh, it does have a, a thin sheet also for anti, um, was that, um, anti, uh, not bottom out, um, preventing it from shorting at the bottom of the case. So I'll, I'll put that down. Why not? And then the case foam, I'll keep that around. And then we got, not sure if bump bonds or gaskets, but some sort of strips. We got, I guess this is the daughter board. Kind of goes all the way along the whole, whole thing. Actually, uh, this is a lighting control. I think this has LEDs on it. That's neat. Did you ever build the Brick 65? No, I did not. Oh, hello, Roro. How's it going? Okay, we got a connector, another ribbon cable, spare, sta stabilizer pads, gaskets, LED cover, it says, and flathead Phillips screw for fixing the acrylic diffusers and RGB PCB. Oh, okay. And unknown. Okay. And what's this? 700 E series installation is oh, okay. Cool. There's a manual. All right. Uh, manual's nice because there's a lot of parts here. I can take a look. Why not? Oops, ripped that apart. How are you doing, Roro? Um. Okay. I guess this is just an ad, like Discord stuff. All right. Ooh. Okay has instructions in Chinese and instructions in English. Very nice. Okay, neat. So we can use this as a guide to follow. Let's put this back. Oh, Boomerangaroo, hello. 16 months, thank you for the prime. How are you? What's new? All right, let's see what we got here. So we got a ooh, red unit. I believe this they use like this dark red back in the day. I remember seeing the posts that people would um, put up. I didn't get a sample unit for this, so I don't know. But I remember I think, like a bunch of other people did. 
Ooh, it's two-tone. Oh. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Oh, what the? <laughs> What's new with you, Scooby-Doo? Uh, not much. Oh, that's, uh... That's something. Um, uh, <laughs> we got an HHKB top. Um... It just gave me blockers on an FRL. And yeah, it has an offset spacebar. This is interesting. This is kind of different. Has a cover for the LED strip portion. Just gotta take that out. Um, and let's take a look at the design itself. Uh, has interesting sides. This kind of reminds me a little bit of the Aeroboard 70. I think it had something like that. Um, here's the back. It's just a centered USB port. Kind of simple on the back part. It does have an acrylic diffuser right between the two pieces. Not sure if you can see, but it has an acrylic diffuser going between the red piece and the gray piece. And then the weight looks like it's aluminum in black and with a silver accent here. So there's a lot of different colors going on here. And then it looks like those long uh, strips that we saw were actually the the um, the bump bonds basically. Um, but it's pretty neat. Actually, I, I do like the lines of this design. It's kind of nice and angular, but it does add a little extra flair here and there. So actually, not too bad. Um, it's kind of from the top, it looks a little bit more elegant, clean. Looks like a cracked out Pluto with that accent. Actually, I don't know what the which the the Pluto one, which one that is. Need to look at the like a thread if there's one or a product listing, just to be sure. All right, so let's take these guys out of here. Oh my God. Someone's getting a someone's getting a an S word over there. I see without me. I see how it is. Oh, cave defense Pluto. Oh, okay. I see. Uh, let me look it up actually. Um, cave defense Pluto. Oh, thank you. Okay, so KVD fans, Pluto. Oh, I see. Yeah, it does kind of look like it. Yeah, it has that same bar on top of the nav cluster. It does have a angular design on the side here. And then it has no engraving on the... The 700E doesn't have an engraving. It doesn't have this kind of um, bevel here. But yeah, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of similar. That's for sure. Yeah, that definitely looks kind of similar. Um, this one does have screws at the bottom, but um, yeah, no, it's it's definitely similar to this. This was 227. Um, I believe the 700E was like $450 almost, so not cheap, at least for back in the day. Yeah, just a regular NFRL board, yep. But this one has the offset space bar, so that's kind of interesting. Um, all right, let's... Um, Let's build this up. So I guess first things first, um, I can check the PCB, just making sure that it actually works here. I think I put the parts over here. Okay. In your personal experience, does full strip bump ons affect the sound a lot compared to with traditional four in each corner? Um, a little bit, yeah. So I do find that more contact area for keyboards, right? So you have more contact area between the board and the either the desk mat in this case, or your desk. It does kind of have that like boomy sort of sound, like you know, like. Kind of like the desk rumbling a little bit like because more of the sound kind of like goes through into the desk so you might like experience that a little bit more but it also kind of depends heavily on the height 
and and um, the height and uh, how um, solid the bump bonds also are. Because for example, if you're using like the standard four bump bonds, but they're very shallow, then you end up having they just kind of sink. Like the board kind of sinks in because the bump bonds don't really hold the board up, depending on the size of the board too. And so that doesn't end up working too well. But for example, like if you use very like hard bump bonds that are kind of tall, um, it actually does isolate the board quite a bit. Um, and so you end up with like the, you kind of can tell that the desk doesn't really reflect a bit of the sound from the board. It's just the board itself and like the sound emanating from the board is what's kind of hitting your ears in this case. So, so yeah, yeah. Uh, contact area does seem to affect how a board might sound on your desk. And also it depends on whether like you have a desk mat or not, or uh, the size of your desk, it can matter to uh, things like that. So yeah, it does affect all that. Yeah, sort of like, yeah, sort of like, re no, well, not quite, not resonance in the case, but uh, like from what you can hear, yeah. You know, like when people have their mics too close to like whatever they're recording and or like the vibrations are traveling up to the mic. In those cases you can hear like like this kind of like low frequency rumbling. Um, you might experience that a little bit more in the case of like high contact area. But like you'll, you'll just hear it from the board like you're not like hearing it from like a recording. All right. Okay. So it has some kind of lighting strip over here. That's neat. And I'm assuming this just kind of works right off the bat. You can double check. Oh, by the way, what's this desk mat? This one is from Jim K. Noir, I believe. I believe this is the Jim K. Noir desk mat. Oh, okay, the PCB gets detected right away on um, Via sick um because this is hhkb main cluster layout i might actually end up building it with hhkb layout in the main cluster kind of it's kind of pointless actually i might hmm, i don't know i'm debating whether i actually should sh split the right shift because the arrow keys then kind of become useless so I'm kind of torn on whether or not to actually split this right shift. Mm. I don't really use these right corner um, keys, so I might actually just keep the right shift full. Uh, I'm debating it. I'm, I'm like a little bit torn. A little bit torn. Because it is an FRL though, splitting the back squeeze is actually okay because I end up with um, the tilde. Oh, you can't, can you guys see the via window? I don't think so. Let me put it up. So like this, so like if I, like the F row is gonna be on the function layer, right? But the tilde is here, which is good. The escape is here, yeah. Um, I can put captus control, so we can map left control there. This one won't do anything. Uh, win and all, that's fine. I mean, I'm on Windows right now, so it's fine. Uh, this won't do anything either. Um, the rest is honestly okay, but I think the only thing would be... Uh, well, I'm pretty used to using... Oh, a bunch of RGB keys are here already. I don't really use them, though. Um, uh, I can program reset to the... To the, uh... To escape or something. Where is the... Where's reset for QMK? Is it, isn't it on special? I thought it was, but I can't find it. Oh, here. Um, hmm. Yeah. I'm kind of torn on whether to split the right shift or not, but. Save the staffs and split the right shift, actually? Yeah, might as well. Why not? Yeah, might as well just split the right shift. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just do that. Okay, so PCB does plug in and does identify, which is good enough. Uh, I'm not going to bother testing every single part, but I can actually see the diodes here, so if they're not missing, it's okay. What's the blue keyboard with the light blue keycaps? It's beautiful. Uh, this is the Gawk Lily, actually. Um, 
is, was today the last day for the lily or was it a few days ago? Gog lily group buy. But the Gog lily's buy is either ending or just ended. It just ended. It already ended. But this is the Gawk Lily in blue-gray with Jim K. Hammerhead. Gawk is the designer and Lily is the name of the board. Oh, still up on the Blotsky? Ooh, well, if you are still um, looking for it or looking to get it, you can still get it on Oblotsky's um, website, Oblotsky Industries. Um, they also... Um, Oblotsky also, um, you know, ships worldwide. So, or actually... I guess the orders might be all managed by Type Plus anyway, so actually that might not matter. So actually it doesn't matter, you might just end up having to, you just have to end up paying in Euro. Anyone got the link? Sure, I can link you. You can Google? Yeah, it's fine. Here. Here you go. Yeah, HHKB arrows for me make sense. Yeah, as well. So um, yeah, sure, fine. I'll I'll save myself the stab and uh, split the right shift as well. Then sounds good. Okay, so I'm gonna break off the tabs here. I think I'm still supposed to do that. I'm gonna use my pliers. It's easier. How much is retail price on this board? The the Nissan 700e. Back when it ran, it ran like a while back. It ran like a year and a half to two years ago, and it was like 400 and some US dollars. So like a 500 US board, ish 500 US. So not cheap. Um, that said, um. That said, I guess the times are different. I mean, we do have a lot more accessibility in terms of boards now. So maybe back then it was just done differently. Also, it was it was limited to I think 170 units for the for the raffle, and then 30 units for like some kind of special edition. Okay, I'm gonna like just look at the instructions just in case I don't miss anything. Okay, place the foam. Okay, foam other is optional. Stabilizers along with stabilizer shims. Did it tell me to do anything else? Yeah, okay, that's it. So stabilizers and then it's asking me to do foam if you want. Blah blah blah. Plate switches. Push the buckles to the right, blah, 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 insert the cable into a socket. Oh, okay, that's for the two cables. And then the gasket, silicone sleeves on the mounting point positions on the plate. Okay, there's sleeves. And then there's gonna be... Okay, the cable goes through, and then the LED cover plate used the blah, 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 okay. I can probably follow the rest of this once I get there. All right, I'm gonna put this aside for now. Does Twitch think I'm Hispanic or something? I don't understand these commercials. I, I've had really random commercials as well, um, actually, about like, for like ads. Like I've been on like other people's dreams and it's also like the most random stuff. So I, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's really weird. <laughs> The Thok Father, hello, thank you for the raid. How are you doing? The Thok Father, what were you up to today? The Thok Father, are you a Topra enthusiast? Is that what the username is about or what is it about? Or is it just keyboard adjacent? Tuan, hello.
I got my first taste of carrots? Huh. We built a $70 mystery board today. What's fun? Oh, cool. Uh, just because I'm old? Ah, okay. Sounds fair. You know, old in this community is such a relative thing. Some people... There's so many young people in the hobby, too, that, like, uh, like compared to them, I'm, like, old. But, you know, um, compared to some other people, I'm not old at all. So, I mean, I'm relatively young, right? But I'm just saying, like, in the, with the respected community, at least, it's kind of hard to say. All right. Um, let's get to try this out. So, let's uh, get our stabs looped up first. Well, I'll be 50. Oh, okay, well, I'll be damned. <laughs> um, oh, looks like actually this package has an incomplete set of stabs, which is just enough, I think. One, two, three. No, actually, let me get a let me get a different pack. I think I have a different pack over there. I think I accidentally got the wrong set. I am um, I'm 31 now, so I'm I'm not too young compared to some of the real young ones in the hobby but um yeah there's 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 definitely older people so damn i'm half your age 15 Holy. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Don't expose me. Oh gosh. <laughs> Can you even be here? <laughs> Just kidding. But dang, that's that's very young. <laughs> 15. I mean, I do know some like 17, 18 year old people in the hobby, right? There's a few, uh, few folks who have been in the hobby for a bit who are pretty young too. But, uh, definitely don't see too many teenagers. At least, I think uh, a lot of people I get along with are like in their, might be like in their 20s or 30s usually. Um, but yeah. 15's, uh, really young. <laughs> DCS and Topri match made in heaven, is that right? Huh, that's interesting. I haven't tried, um, I have not tried uh, DCS and Topri. Specifically, it's because I haven't tried MX sliders in a hot minute. All right, we're gonna need three stabs, right? So for the enter, for the shift, and for the space bar. Let's put those aside. All right, I'm gonna go off and study for my test tomorrow. Sounds good. Good luck with your test tomorrow. Study hard. We'll come by sometime. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take it easy though. Yeah, best of luck. Alright, let's get these stabs done. <clears throat> They're a little tight too, huh? Stavies. These also have a some bit of tightness on the on the clips. But not as much as TX, I think. TX are even tighter than this. Don't really need to do this to be honest, but I'm kind of used to it now. Might as well just make it as consistent as possible. Okay. 
cool. Oh, that's right. Um, there's some big meetups coming up this this season. Are any of y'all going to them? I think there's KeyCon. There is the Texas Roundup. There is gonna be. I heard there's a big meetup in San Diego. I think UCSD is having some big meetup, but I think it's like mostly students and stuff. So a lot of non-keyword people too. And then I've heard of, I mean, there's Keep Live later in August, which I'm not attending because it's just not the right time for me. Um, Has this step become routine for me? Yeah. Um, only if I notice that the if the wire doesn't rotate freely when I let go of it, then I do unclip and reclip a few times just just so that it loosens up, but so that it's consistent between the TX tabs that I have and like anything else. But like for example, when I clip cherry tabs, they don't have that problem most of the time. I need 205, where is it? Oh, here's my 205. I'll be at Keycon running the Wooting booth. Oh, cool. Oh. Do you do you work with um with Wooting? Giving away three boards. Oh, very nice. Um well I'll be at Keycon, so you'll see me there. Um that's pretty cool. I did not know that uh, Wu Ting would be coming to the meet. One of the community managers. Oh, very nice. Oh, that's very nice. That's very cool. Um, there's been excitement around Wu Ting in the past year. So that's pretty cool. It's good to see engagement. What am I bringing? Oh, I don't know. I usually decide what I'm bringing like the week before, so. Uh, whatever I'm feeling at that time, probably, but, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I, I would assume, since I'm flying, I would say I'm bringing one board, or maybe, maybe two, probably one though, probably one board, and a couple of boxes of artisans or something like that, to show, um, but which keyboard I'll bring, I'm, I'm, I'm uncertain. I usually try to fly to, with two boards though to meets, just so that there's a one, you know, something else as well to show. But yeah, it kind of, it kind of depends. Um, like I remember I went to the Canon Keys meetup one time. I think I went with, I think I took a hyphen and I think a Juby was it? And then, um, yeah, it's it's varied. I try to change it up every time. So I try to bring two different boards if possible, like boards that I haven't previously brought to meetups. I try to bring um like at the at the New York City meetup recently, I brought one of the IBM Model F repro reproductions and I think um uh, what did I bring? I think I brought one of the <laughs> Did I bring that time? Did I bring the EXT65 maybe? Or did I bring a full size? I, I forget. 
Oh, no, I, mm, I don't remember. I remember what I brought to the last one. I, I have photos, so I just need to check. Who cares about Cole just fly with a suitcase full of boards? I've I've actually done something similar to that though. I've definitely fl flown with a ton of boards. I mean, it's it's nice and all until it feels too heavy. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, for the convenience of not having to carry all that, I I would rather not. Also, not to mention at big enough meetups, it's honestly moot to bring too many boards because. Not not only is there not enough space eventually, but also a lot of the boards are gonna have overlaps, so you might be bringing something very 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 similar to what other people are anyway. So, uh, kind of pointless to have too many of the same thing. I think. I think it would be nice if the keycon stuff, well, like people, there was like a sheet where. So the New York organizers do this all the time. Actually, they put up a sheet right they put up a sheet um where basically you can fill in what you're going to bring or what you want other people to bring and um and so basically people can bring stuff that other people aren't and that way there is a, a lot of variety i won't be hard to miss as the old guy with the mustache oh actually the thought father the funny thing is at keycon actually you'll be see you'll definitely be seeing older people too though because uh, there are some more veteran, um, for example, Keycon's gonna have a lot of artisan collectors there, mm, artisan keycap collectors, and there are a lot of just like older artisan collectors as well. So, um, and these people have been in the community for a while, and they're 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 also like just just older in general, and so um, yeah, I, I often find that artisan keycap collecting ends up also because it is like a much it's like a luxury kind of thing to do, to collect like keycaps. Um, it it does end up being like it does end up attracting like older people too, because you know they have the ability to collect more too as well. So, yeah, more stability perhaps. CEO can help decide. He might. He might. He might help decide. I don't know. Maybe the keyboard that has the most kiwi hairs are the the, the keyboards that are going. <laughs> I don't know. I live in Utah. I know a few of the artisan guys here. It's a great community here. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, I know. I know the folks in in Utah. I mean, I know Zandubi. Um, I know Mitch. I'm not sure if Mitch Mitchell comes out to the meetups anymore. Um. For a long time, Living Speed Bump was in Utah, but uh, I think he moved to the West Coast, right? Further out west. Um, and then, um, like, I mean, Bambino suited up keycaps was around for a while. Not sure if he shows up anymore. Keyforge was around for a while. Not sure Not sure if he shows up anymore. Neflock, of course, who is organizing Keycon, right? Um, obviously, Aberry and um, her partner, Alan Ono. Um, who else do I know from Utah? Uh, Shell, 058, Audrey. She's really nice. I think she's also in Utah. Um, a bunch of people I know in that area. Super nice folks. Um, it's gonna be nice seeing them. Uh, some of the folks that I haven't seen in, in a minute. Or have never met because they never came out to some of the out of um, other side of the country meets. Because I'm I usually go to East Coast meetups. Um, I've gone to a few West Coast meetups, but not too many. So Keyforge moved, but he used to live in my neighborhood. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I do know he used to live like in I think it was Harriman that area. But yeah. Yeah, the Utah has had a pretty active community for a while too, actually, now that I think about it.
I'm excited uh, to go to meetups. Like outside meetups. There was a meetup that I recently wanted to go to, which was a UIUC's Champagne meetup. Uh, for which I think a lot of my uh, like people that I know in the community, like friends, went to, but I, I couldn't make it out there because it was just not great timing for me. But yeah, and then and then one of these days I really gotta end up in Texas at some point. I mean, I did think of going to the Tex-Mex roundup, uh, but Kikon did, Kikon being planned did end up changing my initial schedule plans. Um, I did want to go to Texas meetup too, but. I do have a lot of people that I know going to KeyCon, and so it's been a while since I've seen a lot of people too, like uh, a lot of uh, faces that I had seen at other meetups, but had they haven't come out or they just live elsewhere now uh, that will be attending KeyCon. So I, I, I felt very compelled to go this year, especially after the previous one that was organized, I think it was organized initially in Denver, uh, fell through because of the pandemic. Um, it's nice to see it going again. So that's kind of where 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 it's at with uh, with the meetups. But I do want to make my way out to to some of the other locations that I haven't been to. Like Midwest, I haven't been too much. Uh, I haven't been too much anything south, like um, or in or like you know like Texas or like maybe like Florida or something. I don't know. Haven't made it out there, so it would be cool to kind of sometime visit those those areas too. It'll be good to meet you. Glad you're coming. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be I'll be happy to be there. Anyway, thanks again for the raid, Talk Father. I really appreciate that. It'd be fun to be able to travel around the world and go to all different meetups. I mean, yeah, I like for example that Seoul meetup that they did, and uh, a few of the big big names in the hobby went to. That was crazy. That was that was really cool too. I, I know I've heard that that um, Philippines meetup is also quite large. Um, I do know that Vietnam also has a pretty big um, pretty big keyword community. So um, I don't know about meetups in um, other places like I mean I do know someone some of the European ones. I think there's like Mechanicon. I think the UK also organize a bigger meetup once in a while. Um, I think they're I think Paris also organize a meetup once in a while. That's on the larger side as well. Vietnam's artisan community is huge. Oh yes, humongous. I mean the a lot of the big big artisan makers are from there too, so it, it definitely bolsters their like community based economy and so yeah, no, there is a humongous amount of um, large number of fans over there, and yeah, the community there is very active, um, especially especially for artisans. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, maybe I should have just done this one at a time. Uh, screws. Where was your invite? I wish. I wish. I know. I, I, I do wish I was invited to the solo one. <laughs> I was a little sad that I, that I, that I wasn't in, wasn't invited, but yeah, that would be that would be amazing. I mean, the Korean one I really wanted to go to because also like there are people that I really wanted to meet there, and um, also I mean, you know, um, my my family is from Korea, so so I haven't been to Korea in over ten years now, and so I would love to go. Like I haven't been to Korea for like almost 12 uh, 11 and a half years almost yeah so it's been a long time so i would really love to go how are you enjoying lily diego hey timmy um i'm enjoying it quite a bit um i actually for uh the past week i did have for the most part of the week i did have the um 
LZCLS SC that I had built uh, last week, and then recently switched back to the Lily, and it's a it's actually a nice change. Uh, one thing about the LZCLS is that it's a bit stiffer, and um, it's just like more classic top mount feeling. And so when you switch from something like that to to a board like this, that's like plateless, the difference is much more obvious. So it was it was a nice welcome change actually. Um, also with with tactiles, it kind of seems to accentuate the the soft bit, and so I actually enjoy that. So and, and the sound is much louder on the. Lily, I think, compared to CLS, which had a much more muted sound. But yeah, I've, I've been enjoying it. It's it's not soft and like flexy, bouncy, you know, like very crazy. It's nothing like that, the Lily at least. And so I enjoy how it brings out the sound because it is plateless, and then you get the benefit of the softness, just just enough softness from the fact that there's no plate. Um, so it's nice that the gaskets sort of hold the assembly there nice and firmly um, in the case so it, it doesn't feel as like flimsy so to speak I think that's the main thing that's different about the Lily for a plateless configuration that um, some other boards might defer The reason why I stopped making flexible boards is because it made playing trombone champ harder. <laughs> Actually, that's pretty funny. I mean, I, I see good reason for not using a flexible board in general. Like, honestly, I personally prefer having one, you know, like one board that's a bit more flexible and one board that isn't. Because it does kind of get old having a very flexible board. It's just a little too much sometimes. Kind of like too much feedback, so to speak. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, I personally end up preferring somewhere right in the middle if possible. But if not, then just have one that's a bit stiffer and one that's not at all. I just googled Trombone Champ, an actual game. <laughs> Mr. Goggy, is it too early to ask? For there will be extras for Lily. Yeah, it might be too, too soon maybe to know. But yeah, probably up to the vendors to decide how, what, what extras will be like. Okay, um, I actually have not decided what's um, not switches. Um, what's uh, blah, 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 blah. what play to use? Uh, so these KTTs, I'm debating whether to use it with an alu plate or a poly plate. Technically, you can even mix and match, but I wouldn't do that. Kind of feels off. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of torn. There is full alu basically and full polycarb. Smoky polycarb, which actually I guess has fewer cuts, like these these random cuts here are not there. Do you have GMK Slasher? I, I do. I do have GMK Slasher. That's actually a set I was thinking about too. The other set that I was always thinking about is Burgundy, but I think GMK Slasher would be a nice nice pick for this for sure. Alu? Alu? Has Kisa been redeemed? Nope. Actually, I'll do a poll for the plate. Why not? Plate. Hello, PC. All right, you guys can go ahead and vote if you want. Jimkey Slasher, please. All right, dealio. Because I'm totally down for that. I'm totally down for Slasher. Such a good set. I haven't I haven't gotten a chance to use because some of my black boards already have like um, some other sets and I just was like ugh, too lazy to get them get them off. So I was like uh, maybe I'll just put slasher on something upcoming, and I haven't yet done that. So usually I guess I would pick like something maybe like a black or a dark gray board, uh, but this red works too. I'm gonna put the bump ons now just because I'm taking a break here from the plate choice. Twitch is not allowing me to vote. Oh, weird. How come? I don't know why.
was thinking Led Zepp. Oh yeah, Led Zepp is a good one too. I think Led Zepp actually works slightly better with uh, kind of like, like a slight tinge of orange, like not fully red, you know? Like a dark orange is kind of like nice for Led Zepp. It doesn't, it, it has a bit of that warm tone to it that Led Zepp doesn't really go exactly with red, red. Like a vivid red. This is not like a Ferrari red, you know? Alright, aloe plate it is. Uh, where is it? Put it aside here. Okay. Aloe plates. Let's say okay rich. I mean, it's not okay rich if I just bought it a long time ago, right? <laughs> Slasher and black is too much uh, contrast gamer vibe. Eh, that's fair. That's actually a kind of fair assessment of that. <laughs> I guess the black red aesthetic definitely did get a bit uh, overblown. So I'm trying these switches because I did to get these like long ago and then I did notice that these were actually basically full travel which I'm totally good with um just wanted to try something different I don't think I've tried that many KTTs I do know that like, HMX switches are basically like rebrand KTTs right sort of so but yeah I just wanted to try something different always usually go with Cherry MX right like MX Blacks um, MX Browns, whatever it is, but sometimes I do like trying something different, just out there. Mr. Koopo, hello. What's good? How are you, sir? Is Gamer Vibes a compliment? Uh, yes and no, probably. Uh, could be, could be either way. I think Gamer Vibes can look good, but it might be overplayed. It might be a little too much. It's kind of like the extra RGB aesthetic that people do for like, um, like battle stations type, like our battle station slash like setups, like PC setups and stuff, or like room setups. Uh, you know, like it can be a little bit overboard. So I think the black and red aesthetics like that too. It's like, it can look good, but it can look really tacky. Yeah, it's just a certain look. Yeah. Doing well? Okay, that's good to hear. Yeah, preference at the end of the day. I mean, this is like asking someone like, is DCS Windbreaker a good or bad thing? And like, or like these, or like I don't know, Jim Handerbite or something, and people are gonna tell you like different answers, right? You know, I debated doing full control, but nah, I'm just gonna do step. I like step better anyway. <laughs> It's like a concert song. Mm. 
Didn't know DCS Windbreaker was a thing. I like it. Oh yeah, it's a very bold looking set. Um, I think it's it's cool actually. It turned out pretty well in DCS, um, especially because the cherry font was picked for that one instead of the Gordon one that uh, other people use for DCS. I think the cherry font actually works for that because of the contrast situation. Um, and yeah, no, it turned out pretty nice. <laughs> it's an interesting set, interesting looking set. Okay, so um, this is HKB, right? Oh, I haven't tested my steps. Um, I guess while I'm at it, let me get Slasher. Is it here? Here, I have it right here. Chimkey Slasher. Uh, I'm gonna take the caps out of the box. It's still new, I haven't used it at all. I just looked at a set that a friend had, like in person, and then didn't open mine. It's because I already knew what it looked like, but it's a nice set. Oh, disaster. Okay, that's fine. Just need three caps here. Shift, enter, and space bar. This infamous Diego is always rising unconsciously with those glasses. <laughs> what soft shown is? It me. Sounds good. It's a bit tight feeling. Did I over tighten these maybe? Good. Okay, good enough for me. Let's go ahead and put the rest of the switches. Kind of funny, but these uh, the bottom housing and the stems of these switches pretty much match the color of the PCB, which is kind of a coincidence. Obviously, the orange doesn't really match, like the burgundy of the board or whatever, the wine red. But it's in the family of colors, so I guess it's fine. But yeah, the navy is like a match. Is this your first time using KTT, Diego? Um, recently, yeah. I've tried KTT before, but 
that I've used it in a build like as of the past like year ish. Yeah, pretty much. Don't really use them often. I've like tried them at meetups. I've like, I think I've like tried them before at some point, um, like offline and stuff. But yeah, I think in the in like a live stream. Yeah, it might be the first time. I've never used. Oh yeah, I guess I guess so. Yeah, I mean you kind of like me. You probably just used like MX Blacks or. Gadron switches or something, right? So I guess that would make sense. Also, I'm not sure if you noticed, but these also have the really annoying clasp opening style. Which I mean, I I fortunately had had like an opener that was compatible with that style, but oh god, it's extra annoying to open these. At least they are very nice and tight housings, though. Like definitely did not need to use switch film, so I didn't. But yeah, these housings are like a pain in the butt to open up. Um, oh, Mr. Pigeon, hello. Thank you for the four months, my friend. Also, Pigeon, have you um gotten um uh, have you gotten uh stickers or stuff from me? If not, um I do have a form. I, think, I believe it's exclamation sticker or exclamation stickers. I forget. I have not. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll send some, a couple, maybe. Usually, I send like one or two in the first time, and then people start requesting more. And usually, I try to have people uh, request them every like three months or something. But not everybody remembers, so sometimes I just add a few more, whatnot, later on down the line. Okay. It's interesting to solder a separate PCB here like this because it kind of feels like I'm doing like a macro pad. It just feels diff. This ribbon cable is just kind of annoying me just here. I'm just going to remove it for now. All right. Those teeny separated nav, nav plates are always cute. Yeah, it really feels like a little macro pad to me. Get soldering. Ah, this is gonna be interesting. Separate offset space bar, kind of close to the chin of the board. I mean, I'm sure it's probably normal for typing. Probably doesn't feel that much different. I just kind of. It might be a little bit more comfortable, who knows. All right, uh, is my iron hot yet? Um, okay. Ooh, I got some snacks here. Got these um, Indian snacks from Wee. Um, just gonna have some. Now we actually get the solder. Get that out of the way. No contaminating my food. I'll wash my hands in a bit. I 
after I'm done soldering. All right, let's get soldering here. Oh, I forgot my fan. Need the fan. Not that it really helps too much, but it absorbs a little bit of the fumes, which is better than nothing. Well, let me get it anyway. <clears throat> We mentioned, oh, it's so good, man. I see staff shims 1.2. Yep, 1.2. Well, apparently, I didn't know it was 1.2 until I opened the box. So, yeah. This stream was sponsored by We again. I see. Oh yeah. Is the fan too loud? If if it is, I can switch over to my filter. Um, Oh, I see the noise filters acting up here. Let me, I think I need to like restart it. Restart the filter thing. Me like blue solder mask? Same. I really like blue solder mask. Subwoofer going wild. Oh yeah. Okay, let me uh get the get this thing. Oh, it's like okay. I think it should work now. So let me set it over. Okay, is that is that better? I think I think it works right so all right how do you feel about HKV 70 percent um honestly uh kind of weird <laughs> um like this specific board like the FRL HKV is like I mean TKL F HKV in general is like a weird concept to me um so yeah because HKV itself is you know, the whole point of HHKV is to have a 60%. So it's the compactness and the ease of using that layout that's supposed to be the good part of it. So anything extra seems just, well, extra. So I don't know. I mean, I feel like at best the other stuff serves like a macro, macro column, macro clusters, but uh, it's not like, it's not like it's not useful. So it only serves maybe like an aesthetically weird purpose. I, I find it kind of weird. It's, it's definitely very, very odd. Uh, don't love it, don't hate it though. I don't hate it. I think it's, I think it's fine. It's, it's there to exist as a gimmick. It's kind of fun. It kind of looks funny though. But if I have to stick to one, I, I, I prefer just like, you know, standard HHKV, right? TKLHKB, I think it's an inside joke that I don't really get. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's like one of those jokes that it's like an inside joke that you don't have to get. You know what I mean? It just is like it's it's the why why just because you know like it, it just exists for for no good reason. It, it's it's just there. I mean, just kind of. I mean, because HHKB at the same time, like. HHKB main cluster, right? Like the 60% cluster part of it, essentially is equivalent to a win keyless 60%, you know? Like you essentially are blocking one key from each side of the bottom row, right? And so functionally, whether you're typing on the win keyless 60 or a HKB 60 is essentially the same. I mean, how you decide to do your backspace is up to you, right? But effectively should be the same, you know? 
So, so yeah, I think when HHKB 60, I mean, HKB anything extended from that is got, is just a pure gimmick, and then it, it looks really weird, though, because adjacent to, like, the nav cluster, it just kind of looks off, because that blocker portion is typically going to extend to a corner, but then it doesn't. It gets, like, blocked off again by the nav cluster portion, like the arrows and stuff. And so, yeah, it ends up looking really weird. But yeah, it exists for fun. And I think that's fine. You know, this board kind of like would be neat if this board, this Nissan 700E or whatever, were like two separable boards that are like connected somehow. Kind of like there was this board back in the day called the Tank V2, I think. It was this Chinese board. This was like back when I started. It was like 2017 or something. This is back when like ZZ96 was like a popular thing. Um, and there was this board called a Tank V2 that essentially had a, I'm pretty sure it was basically like a separate like numpad type of macro cluster that was like a, like you could basically attach it from either side or something like that. Um, it was really neat. I, I just don't know, like, I've never seen it again, but I remember the concept was basically you could attach, like, a numpad or something like that from either the left or the right. And it was kind of neat, because it was, like, an actually separate piece of cnc aluminum with its own, um, internals, and you could connect it, essentially, to the main board. And it was not like a pass-through USB kind of thing, like, where, um, like, for example, like, getting, like, a matrix numpad and, like, putting it to a DKL or something like that. It was like a, like a, like a mechanical connection of the cases, which was kind of cool. I haven't seen that kind of idea done again, though, since... Is that a tofu keyword? The gray one? Oh, no, it's uh, it's the lily, um, by Gawk. Uh, it, the group I almost just ended, I believe, Obolotsky Industries from the EU, still has it open, but it's a it's a keyword that had its group I just recently. Interesting. How has work been recently? Um, it's been going, man. Um, it's been interesting. I, I have like things to say about it, but basically, um, I am like closer to being done than I actually thought I was. Apparently, or at least my, my boss seems to be optimistic that we can wrap things up more quickly than I initially expected. And so it's like ramping up. Like I have a lot of shit going on right now because basically I'm being told, Hey, we got these projects and you better finish them up around this time so that we can kind of move on with that and you can be done. But yeah, uh, so that's, yeah, it's been a little hectic <laughs> to say the least. Um, so actually that's why I didn't stream this whole past week. It was not because I didn't have things to do, but it was also because I just had work to do. Like I was actually working all weekend and it that sucked, but it's also okay. It's a, it's definitely not work I don't enjoy, so um working is fine, it just takes a lot of time. So kinda scary. Yep, scary is the right word for it. Uh-huh. It's just nerve-wracking. You know what I mean? Like they have expectations of you and you're like, oh, I did not know I had to deliver it too soon, and now you do. So a little nervous about that for sure. 
Okay. What's up, man? How's the Lily been? Um, the Lily's been good. I mean, I did uh, was I was using a TKL for a bit, and then it was a, okay, this top mount TKL, right? The LZ CLS SC for a bit that I built last week, and then I switched back to the Lily this um, this week, and so it's been a welcome change because the the CLS is a bit stiffer, and um, this one, like when I came back to Lily, you could definitely notice the difference because first of all, I'm using like these tactiles on this like plateless configuration which makes you feel like a bit softer and kind of like slightly bouncier I guess but not quite bouncy because the assembly inside is actually held quite tightly like snugly um, but because it is still plateless uh, it still feels noticeably softer than having a you know top mounted plate um, so yeah it's been comfy and also you know saving space from going from a TKL to a 60 is always nice um, so yeah, at least productivity wise, I, I do prefer 60s in terms of uh, saving space and having a bit more dust space, but yeah. Um, I also don't really mind uh, using a TKL because the aesthetics are good on TKLs. So, yeah. Alright, so what was next in the manual? Let's just double check that. So it was doing install switches, solder the switches, push the buckles to the right, insert the cable and fasten the buckle. Oh, this is the installing the the joining cable between the two. Um, I'm gonna connect the two PCBs, yeah, okay. So that's this guy here. Thanks, man. I feel like I made a great choice. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, I think it's kind of unique among um, plateless boards in some ways because it does feel a bit more. It, it doesn't feel as like the bouncy, flexy type of um, typing feel that some other boards try to achieve. And so it's like a nice middle ground of like having something that's plateless, which does effectively soften your typing experience, but at the same time, it's not over. We like it's not excessive, so to speak. So it's it's comfortable. Um, so and and those, of course the aesthetics of the board itself is just uh, very nice. So so that's something that you get to enjoy as well. Okay. Then it says plays the gaskets. So yeah. All right. So I guess this is gasket mounted. So we just put gaskets on top of these guys. Oh, nice and snug. Um, silicone pieces. Oh, it's so warm in here right now. I'm like sweating. Okay. Are on, and then let's see. Pour on, blah blah blah. Okay, LED cover above the plate, and use screws to secure the top. Blah blah blah. Um, do I want to keep these flex cuts? Eh, it's fine. The aluminum plate is probably sturdy enough. Okay, sure. Oop. What the? Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and open up the board. So how do I open this up? It looks like I open it from the top. Oh, it uses M2 screws. But there's a lot of them, so that's a little bit more um, 
relieving, but it still uses very small screws. Okay, let's. <laughs> no! Yeah, M2. Um, it doesn't use the. So it doesn't use the way of like putting them on the. You know, like around the frame. That's those I really don't like. Like, kind of like on the K or like on the. Like some of AIO3's boards, I think. Uh, AIO3 has like that style of like um, screwless look thingy uh, for the for the top case. At least it's like through the case, sort of like the way Key Cult does it. Um, but it, yeah, it is M2. <laughs> it is M2. That's gonna. F wow! Thanks for, thanks for dropping a ball of fur. <laughs> Sorry, my partner just like dropped a ball of kiwi's fur that um, she brushed off from kiwi just now. Oh, there's like smaller ones and bigger ones. Okay, time to not mix those up. Okay, so that's the bottom case. So the bottom part is the this. Oh, it's it's just flat here. Okay. All right, so um, and then and then there's oh, it's kind of like key cold sports where it basically has a mid piece. Okay, that's interesting. That is interesting. I guess there's screws around this acrylic diffuser too, so gotta unscrew that. There's actually quite a few parts here, so let's go ahead and undo those. I don't know why the acrylic diffuser here has Phillips, but it uses Phillips. off that's the acrylic diffuser and then there's the key screws there there's a lot of screws is everything m2 yep everything is m2 sadly yes <laughs> sadly everything is m2 here right now oh my god i'm like sweating Why is it so hot here? Mm. Okay, I think that's all of them. All right, cool. Okay, so what's next? Let's see. What's this? For what? I tried two different build methods and does not exist magic recipe that could change this keyboard to Thog Heaven. If some board needs special recipe and has some perfect build to sound it correctly, then that board IMO isn't good. I'm using universal methods that all good boards were great when was great. Okay, grammar. If universal methods can't Thog good board, then a keyboard isn't good. Simple. I don't want to make a lab. Keyboard should be easy to thock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keyboard should be easy to thock. Coveted thock. I know. Life is hard when keywords don't thock.
Okay, 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 okay. So let's see here. <clears throat> um, okay, so oh, that's interesting. So this has a this is rather interesting because let me show you here. Also get a cloth here to clean this up. But this has like a, do you guys see this gasket? So it has like some kind of gasket mounting for the part of, I'm assuming it's for the part where the space bar is mounted. Like the, the frame is, it has a gasket to hold that part, which is different. So that's neat. Okay, so let's see. Um, apparently, okay, so it's telling me to put this guy on, I assume, like this. Just for this is just for uh, prevent if it bottoms out, just for preventing it to um, from hitting the case. Place the LED cover above the plate and use secure screws. Okay, all right, and then doorboard thingy. Plug it in here. And then, gotta make sure to, man, there's a lot going on. All right, pass through the cable. So make sure to pass the cable down there and uh, just make sure that these guys are nice and Placed right here. Okay. Just gotta make sure that this doesn't get too entangled up. All right. Okay. Place the LED cover above the plate and use screws to secure the top and middle case together with the assembled plate. LED cover. But I think that's LED cover. What's the LED cover? Ah, okay. Here. LED cover. The IKEA manual for the board is cute. Yeah, it's kind of nice. I mean, it has a lot of parts. So, oh, it's just a piece of silicone that just covers this part so that the uh, there's no LED bleed. Uh, okay, that's nice. It's kind of like it kind of serves like a gasket actually. Oh, that's huh, nice. Nice little attention to detail there. Okay, that's cool. And then just put the top case. Okay. our top case and then flip it over and use these guys here right yeah okay Hi Kiwi. Hi. Hi Kiwi. Oh no. Don't don't step on stuff. No no no, it's okay. Okay, bye. Goodbye. So I realized the room is a little darker than before. There we go. No wonder it was kind of dark in here. I realized that my lighting reset. Oh okay. Hi. <laughs> You guys hear that? He's like saying something. Did he get his uh things? S words? Okay. So he already ate.
Wait a minute. I screwed up, didn't I? Ah. Oh. oh, I'm an idiot. These screws should have been on. Oh, it's just like the key cult. Of course. I'm like, why am I doing this? And why am I not seeing screws through the case? I'm like, yeah, of course. Of course I am. I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Um, I need to put these small M2 screws through, just like the key cult. Like where you put the screws before you actually close the two pieces. I don't know why I didn't think of it. It's been a minute, I guess. The space bar casket in the middle is kind of odd. I mean, yeah, I guess so. I guess it's also just because there, there is like a long, thin piece of aluminum there, right? So... I assume the gas is just so that it doesn't like, kind of like, maybe like, I don't know, would it like rattle or something? I don't know. But, I mean, I'm assuming that's kind of part of why, you know? Okay. I'm a dummy and forgot about those screws. So, um, I need to get those through. Where? <sighs> Let's see. Wait, what? Wait, what? So these screws can just go from the top? Oh, they can. Oh, okay. But why is this different from here? Place the LED cover above the plate and use screws to secure the top and middle case together. But why are they only using six instead of all the rest? Mm. Okay, I'll just follow the instructions to a T. I'm a little confused at first, but I think I get it now. What are you doing, Kiwi? Okay, sorry, had skill issue for a second there. Okay, I'll just follow this instruction right here. Actual keyboard content in 2024. Nice. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm just going to follow this to the T. Use the screws to secure light diffuser, but why would these screws not go on first? Uh, that's, that's kind of weird. Connect the main PCB. Oh, huh. But those screws are these guys for fixing acrylic diffusers and RGB PCB. Yeah. I think the manual's wrong there. That HKB looks sexy. Love the colors. Thanks. Yeah, it's the one of the Lily prototypes, the one in uh, blue gray. All right, use the screws to secure these guys. All right, so this goes in here like this.
Okay, acrylic diffuser is on, and then PCB. Can the main PCB to align it with the cables? Sure. Uh, which face? Which goes up? In this case, this face goes up. Like this. Then screw the light control PCB onto the bottom case. All right, cool. Bottom case. I could have just connected it later, but okay. <clears throat> plugged in and placed on top okay USB port nice and visible good and then lastly apparently these guys can just go straight from the top so let's do that so let's see we got long screw one two three four one two three Wait, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Am I missing one? Maybe there was an extra one. Mm -hmm. Let's see here first. Oh no, there's one in the middle, okay. way to join these two okay it right attach the rubber feet and install keycaps and plug in all right cool let's just make sure speaking of plugging in that this is all good should light up very nice lights up there and huh cool all right that lights up and okay so let's get the keycaps, which uh, I believe Mr. Gawk asked for a GMK Slasher. 
Um, also, I'm pretty sure I have a set of novelties for it, so let me go get that. Um, and also, I'll go. I'm gonna go wash my hands for a sec here. Alright, I'll be right back. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'm back. And uh, Kiwi's here, as you can see, with this. Hi, Kiwi. Are you having fun? Here, that's your fur. Waffles are. How are you doing? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Kiwi, hi. You wanna help me put keycaps on Kiwi? Look, stuff that you can toss onto the floor. Kiwi wants to help. Yeah, oh yeah, he does. Oh, are you gonna stay there? Good. You can stay there. You wanna help me put keycaps, or you wanna put fur onto the board? Either is fine. You wanna go? Okay. Oh. <gasps> Goodbye, Kiwi. Hi, Kim. How's it going? Is chili in Texas? Wait, define chili. <laughs> define chili.
like <laughs> babe Kim says that 65 degrees Fahrenheit is chilly in Texas <laughs> It's it's forty eight F. Okay, okay, that's that's chilly. That's chilly. That's chilly. 40, 40, 48, 48 is chilly, but but sixty five is not chilly. Sixty five is like nice, nice and cool. Sixty-five high to the okay. That's nice and nice and nice and toasty, nice and warm. Actually, that's not warm per se. It's like cool. It's like okay. Novelties uh, just has some bottom row and some enter modifiers. No shift modifiers too, actually. I'll just use the enter one, I think. I mean, uh, novelties, my bad, not modifiers. I mean, they are modifiers. So just this edgy knife novelty. Extra, extra gamer. GMK slasher novelties. Oh, I think I need to adjust this one switch here. It's slightly tilted. Extra gamer needed, not included with batteries. <laughs> it's raining here in California too. I hate it. Wait. But I thought I thought California needed the rain. <laughs> I guess it doesn't mean you can't hate it. So that's fair. That's fair. Okay to hate it. This oh that's true, that's true. This year this year California has record levels of rain. That is true. That is true. There's there was a lot of like flooding and other issues some point too so yeah that's fair I mean I guess that's what happens when you don't get rain for a long time and then you suddenly get torrential amounts of rain can't possibly be good I mean we've been sometimes been getting a lot of rain too um, was it last year when we had those big floods out in like Brooklyn and Queens but yeah, I, there's a time we had a lot of flooding here too, actually. The f subway flooding in New York was crazy. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. Not fun, not fun at all. I did not enjoy that. <laughs> The dankest, brownest, grayest, most rat infested water I've ever seen. Oh, it hurts to read, but you're totally right. <laughs> you're totally right. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll do. Should I just do two artisans on these two corners here? I don't know. Oh. What's up, Kiwi? Kiwi has something to say over there. He's just asking for attention, I think. The videos of people just like swimming through it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, you know, you see, when you gotta get from place A to place B, you know, you just gotta do what you gotta do, okay? Please understand. Please understand that people are just trying to get to wherever they need to go you know that's all that's all that's all
show up to work with stinky wet ass dink. <laughs> oh shit, did I do the modifiers wrong? Fuck me. Oh my god, I messed up because of the blockers. Um, I thought it was just like the usual, but it looks like it's not. Wait, hold on. Actually, what's the layout for this? Is it not 1.5s? Is it just 1.25s actually? I think that's maybe that's why. 7U HHKB. No, I, I fucked up. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, great. Well, that'll give me an opportunity to fix this too. So at least the fuck up is helpful. Oh, interesting icon backspace. Okay. Um, great. So I guess I gotta take off some keycaps and reopen this up. Um, okay, I gotta screw here. Gotta screw here. One there, one there, one here. And then here. Here. And here. Great. Alright. So, oh great. Time to go through like 10 billion screws. This board has a lot of screws, man. Okay. So, can they come out, please? Random, yeah, I don't know why icon backspace is truly random. Kidding, kidding, kind of cursed, I guess. It's very random, but it's icon only. I love the hide and seek you have to play with uh, screwless boards. Yeah, sometimes it's a little annoying, but yeah. And also it depends on the board because some boards just do it differently. So it's like you can't memorize it for one board and then not, and then you won't know it for the other one. You know? Okay, I missed that screw. I don't know where it is. Team Key Slasher keeping you on your toes? Oh yeah, edgy, edgy as it goes. Alright, I got all the screws here, so that should make me... Okay, yeah, that'll, that'll make me put this... Separate these guys, and then I can go ahead and unplug this. And then I can probably take this to the side here. And flip this over. Oh, and then I gotta get through the diffuser too, because apparently the diffuser covers the screws. So get through the diffuser. Diffuser, screws. Oop. Stay there. Actually, no, come with. Too many sets with naked numpad? Oh yeah, with the mm, no sub legends on the on the numpad section. Yeah, part is kind of odd, huh? Oh, this has two segments to it. Oh, I see. It has a clear part and a diffuser part. I see. Kind of neat implementation for the diffuser, actually. Okay, next case okay, screws. Between these two.
cool. So it's finally off, I think. Yep, it's finally off. So I'm gonna carefully flip it over. Get all those screws from here. Okay. That gives me the top case. Let's just put it aside for a sec. And then I got these guys here. Random screw. It's here. All right, so, okay, let's fix the tilde first. <clears throat> Oh, I. Wob Hangul has naked numpad too? Oh, that's kind of annoying. Considering it's icon plus text, right? I mean, I guess this set is the same, right? No, well, actually, I think I did that with. Did I do that with Dolch? I forget. With Dolch R5? I'm not sure. Let me see. Okay. I think that's fixed now. Just double check. Yep, I think that's I think that's good. I think Dolce's base numpad, okay. I did not have flawed dented brain back when I was doing Dolch kidding. I do, I do I do regret one thing about Dolch R5 kidding is that, um, or not kidding, but uh, legend choices. The only thing that I regret is not doing traditional print scroll pause. But at the time I just felt strongly about doing the print scroll pause with the one-liners, but uh, um, I mean, ultimately to me, it doesn't matter that much because I use artisans on that section, but um, for most people who do use the keys, it might be like, oh, why not just stick to the traditional icon plus text and like the double liner uh, print screen stuff. Oh, okay, Q is going to play his toys, so he's off to do that. Ah, uh, okay, it does say, mm, okay, so it's literally the opposite here for the 1.5 and 1.25 because of the separated space bar. Uh, who would have known? All right, let's desolder these guys. Yeah, there's definitely worse out there. Um, could have been worse, but I think that's the only part that I didn't like um, in retrospect. But I think I don't think it it's too bad. I think in retrospect, it's like, if it's going to be um, icon plus text, might as well just stick to everything in the traditional way, like the just OG Cherry way of thing doing things. With, I mean, obviously, like, compatibility and whatnot in mind. Hopefully that did the job. It looks like it. 
Okay. Get the these guys out. Nice, and the other ones too. Okay, one new, one point five, one point five, one new. Okay. It was nice meeting you, and I'll see you at Keycon. Sounds good. Falkfather, thank you so much for stopping by and for the raid. I hope to see you there. And yeah, thank you so much. Take it easy. Take care. My Hako died recently. Oh, really? They do die after all, huh? How did it? Did it just like not turn on, or uh, what was the. What was the. Um, the culprit. Did it just straight up just kaput? Nothing turned on, nothing heated up. No idea, just stuck turning on one day. Really? That's kind of surprising, you know? But, hmm, yeah, maybe the circuitry just fried up in the... That's, that's weird. It's very weird for the stuff like that to just straight up not turn on, though. Like, there's gotta be a reason, right? Maybe a surge and then it just fried the circuitry inside? I don't know. It's wild. Cause you hear about these these things lasting like decades. Probably just a lemon. Yep. Oh well. Uh, do you already get a new one, or uh, are you gonna get a uh, different one? Maybe are you gonna get one of those pine soles or whatever? Whatever they're called, the the like more portable ones. I I, I honestly like the Haka workstations just because they just are just workhorses, you know. But I, I get it when people like are like, oh yeah, I would rather just have something more uh, more portable and like something that I can just use with like USB C or whatever. I get it. I'm a Haka whore. <laughs> I mean, me too. To be fair, uh, I just, I just really enjoy the reliability of the brand, so I can't help it. Like they just haven't felt like haven't failed me at all, so I I can't help it. Actually, for a while I had the um, FX888, but the analog one. So basically, it's the exact same, but instead of the up down. Uh, temperature controller or whatever it had the the knob which kind of felt nice I think I ended up just giving that to somebody but yeah I do like the analog <laughs> soldering irons just kind of kind of looks cooler too I think instead of the seven segment digital display type
Okay. It's taking a little longer than I thought, but there's a lot of screws here. easier on the second run. Okay. And then lastly, top to bottom. it. Oh wait, I shouldn't do that. <clears throat> I don't know why I put the keycaps on, but I do need to still put those screws in. up adore my frags hello how's it going frags how are you doing bits here on both sides. Cool. Big trailer right now? Nice. Hmm. No escape. I kind of like that. Actually, well, said I that I was gonna put an R's in there, right? So might as well do that instead. Got our nice novelties. This set is big, edgy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think there's not that many um like black and red sets actually. And so I think this one, I think, is the one that kind of nails it more than the other ones. I think there were a few before, like, for, I think it was like Demonic and some others. But um, yeah, I, I think out of all of them, I think this one was the one that turned out the best. All right, so actually black and red, huh? Hmm. I'll do I'll do this guy kind of like an accent this uh Kug caps KUG and 
for the other one, maybe I'll do the wrapped by cult worship cats, who actually is supposedly was gonna do collab, but she didn't. I don't think. All right, sweet, we're done. Um, let's try it out. Let us try it out. Okay, there's that, and let's see, is that, oh, the reflection's pretty bad on this, huh? Let me adjust that a little bit. It's kind of dirty there. It's a little too bright. So I think it's mostly the angle here. That looks a little better, I think. There it is. Okay. We can look at it from the top too though. The overhead might be a little better actually. Yeah, let's do it with the overhead today. Um let's get the typing test up. Good old monkey type. Okay, and let's see. Um, let's get the music off. And let's set the. Oh, you need a link to a playlist? I can send it to you actually. Um, here. Um, and let me, uh, let me move the mic over. Okay, that should do it, I think. I think we're good to go. So let's give this a shot. Um, we have right now, uh, this is um, the Nissan 700E. Uh, it's a FRL TKL, basically. It has these HKB blockers, which are pretty unique, pretty different. Um, and maybe I'll zoom in a little here. And right now we have Jim K Slasher, the keycaps, and then for the switches we got these um, KTT ESIA switches. Um, these are linears, uh, about, I think it is like four millimeter travel distance, and um, these are loop with two five, and they're on an alu plate. So let's get to try it out, all right. All right, here we go.
That sounds like a physical input device. It does. The spacebar actually sounds kind of interesting. It's very loud, very like. Like this is what I would actually say. It pops like the spacebar. Uh, pretty unique. Uh, definitely very different spacebar sound from like what you would expect. So pretty cool. Pretty cool. I actually kind of kind of like this idea of this offset spacebar just because it just does sound a bit different. All right. Um, as far as like typing feel though, like it doesn't really feel that much different from regular typing. Like I guess maybe it's slightly more, um, like slightly below, so it's like a bit more comfortable for the placement of the fingers, but uh, not not like a. I don't think it's like a huge difference per se. All right, here are the mods. I do hear a little bit of resonance in the case, especially when I'm like tapping on the mod, so maybe a little bit of case foam could help, but I think it still sounds pretty good though. Or maybe even like force break mod, you know, that thing could also be kind of beneficial. You know, actually this kind of sounds nice um, in the sense that um, it's it has flex cuts on both the plate and the PCB and yet it sounds pretty loud, which is nice. So it's, I mean, I'm sure it's a combination of the switches and the plate and whatnot, this, the whole setup, but it does sound um, pretty good even, even, even with that considered. So, yeah. see it from the side here if you want um, so I can actually let me see if I can like rotate a little bit but it has like LEDs that go the whole part in the back yeah I thought it would be more dampened too yeah that was my thought as well but yeah I, I do actually like this RGB this is a very um, I mean it's an inconspicuous way of doing RGB um, so because it's in the back right so you won't really see it from your typing angle right like from where you are sitting but like let's say you stand up to get something and you're walking past your desk and then you see from the side or the back you'll see it so pretty cool very inconspicuous pretty nice actually I, I actually do like this implementation of RGB very nice and I think it's like in a way just kind of elegant um, elegant way to do it um, so I, I actually do do really dig this I think it's pretty nice pretty well done very nice and even. I mean, it, it does use a very, very long and evenly distributed array of LEDs here. So actually done quite nicely uh, for that. Yeah, the RGB, um, honestly, I'm just pretty good. Um, so I'm gonna here try to turn on the autofocus here for, for this. Um, so you can kind of see the board here in different lighting conditions, like a bit more reflective here from the light that's right on the kind of like 45 degree-ish angle from my desk here. And then you can see it from the side. You can see the RGB from the side. Actually, I like that. Um, it has this kind of like grilled side. It's very subtle. What is it there? Um, and yeah, 90 degree typing angle. Pretty, it's definitely not on the shallow side uh, front height is like moderate it's not too tall but it's also not short I would say it definitely has a def decently like it's, it's like it's like considerable front height here if you if you care about that kind of stuff but um, as far as like switches it does the switches do, do seem to be sitting a little bit below the skirt here like of the like the start of the cap is sitting a little bit below in the case so Kind of sinking in a little bit more than you would see usually, but actually pretty nice because there's no gaps or anything in between. So I, I do like that actually. 
Um, and then we can check out the bottom of the case here. So here the bottom of the case, the bottom is pretty simple. Uh, it uses, I mean, this one is in gray and black here. Um, and accents in silver. Um, it uses long, uh, long strips for bump bonds. So also a bit different from other boards that use just like point bump bonds um, at the corners. Uh, pretty nice though. Uh, overall, I, I actually do enjoy how this is designed and this was implemented overall. Like it's pretty well done.